Hey guys, it's Tina from Pasadena, and I am in uh, El Cajon in Amar Campanajar's campaign office. And I have Katie right here. Hi. She came, I, I just came back from uh, canvassing in El Cajon, and it was really awesome. There's a lot of volunteers here. It's a Saturday morning, and I'm really excited. And I uh, want Katie here to explain the campaign from the beginning and how she got started and how it's um, progressed up okay, to this point. Uh, how many months now? Um, 18 months? Or, uh, yeah, so I've actually started um, with this campaign in July uh, of last year. So it's been over a year. Um, and I remember the first like, volunteer event, like just struggling to get like 10, 15 people out. Um, but now it's like we're getting 30, 40 on a regular basis. But I actually knew Omar since 2012. Um, when I was in high school, I used to intern for the Obama campaign. So um, it was sort of um, like that was sort of how I fell into politics. Is like I liked interning for, for Obama. And um, Omar really mentored me and like sort of encouraged me to um, really pursue this. And what was Omar's uh, role in Obama? He was the regional field director. So okay. he did all of the um, outreach in San Diego County um, and we had callers calling all throughout the country so okay and so how is it how what does it look like right now um, well, it's so it's been so so exciting because um, we've just been having so many people out. Um, like this weekend, even today, we have uh, canvases in like four or five locations, and many like um, there was one that had like 60, 70 people there. Um, there is like this one here, and then there's another one with thirty people. So it's just it's been amazing to see that the watch this campaign grow. Like compared to like six months ago when it was a struggle to get like 10, 15 people out to now when it's like people see this race is winnable people want to get involved people are starting to really care about um about this race and it's been amazing to see what do you think is the factors that contribute to excitement is it the indictment is it like against anti-trump what is the thing that's really like sparking people's um, enthusiasm i think it's a combination of both um east county has long been um there hasn't really been any any good candidates that people think actually have a chance. So this is one of the first times um, in this area. Um, the party like often like doesn't really pay that much attention to it just because um, this area it has been so Republican for so long. No one really thinks of it as winnable. And now with the indictment and with the, um, after Trump, people are starting to see like um, we actually have a chance that we actually can win this. Um, and that with the people power that we've been be, being been able to utilize over the past year um, that we actually have a shot. So it's like people, like a lot of times, like um, six months ago, like um, 10, 15 people, like we'd confirm them and then we'd be lucky if that many would show up. Like now if like 10, 15 people say they're going to go, we're probably going to get 30, 40. Oh, wow. So, it's, so more than Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and just people have been like contacting us being like just so excited that um, – there is a candidate in East County that reflects people's values, that people, um, that we actually have a shot to get someone in office that will represent the people in the 50th for the first time in 40 years of having the Hunters in office. Also, oh, when I was canvassing, I saw on my uh, right, list, you know, Democrats, but also American Independents and some Republicans right, in there. And I was a little bit, like, worried. I'm like, is this going to be a voter I can uh, persuade? Or So why was, like, why are those uh, voters in, in the list? Or how do you filter those? Um, so it's just talking to Democrats. Um, that's not going to be enough to flip this Thank this seat. So we need Thank to be able to engage everyone, um, and even Republicans, Thank even no too. party people, Bye -bye. Um, they they don't like Hunter because Hunter he's been safe in this seat for so long that he hasn't ever had to campaign campaign has hasn't ever had to talk to anyone, and especially with the indictment, um, we want to be able to talk to everyone. So um, like we can't win this race by just talking to Democrats. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to engage the voters, just like we're engaging in this district that hasn't historically been engaged. Um, like we need everyone to flip this seat and we've been able to get um, quite a few supporters across party lines. And so what are the Republic, what are the non-Democrats saying or are you getting volunteers that are non-Democrats? 
Um, yeah, um, a lot of what people want is they just want good governance, um, someone that's not being being indicted. Um, and like for the past 40 years, the hunters really haven't engaged that much in the district. So it's just simply having someone go to their house, knock on their door or talk to them, ask them about like, what issues do you care about? That means a lot. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I hope this didn't die on us here. Oh, are we still on? I don't know. Yeah. No. Oh. We are. It's like while well, we're. Oh, we are still on. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Katie, so much. Um, we have. So, actually, I've been in contact with this team. And um, we, we in Pasadena are, you know, trying to do postcards, too, and they've been really great about supplying um, the contact, the addresses. And so we are, you know, furiously writing and putting stickers on these postcards and sending them off pretty soon. Um, Becca. We have Becca here. Okay. Thank you so Bye. much, Katie. <laughs> okay. Becca, would you like to tell me us? Well, Any personal I just have, stories of how you started and how, sure. How you I was also going to say thank you guys for helping and um, oh, absolutely out of district. I mean, it all adds up. Ballots go out next week, which is when the election starts. People sometimes think, you know, November sixth. That's when it is. No, it starts in about two days. So um, I first got involved in this campaign uh, back in July. Okay. So, um, but even before this, um, in 2014, I helped out a candidate named James Kimber. He's a okay. Democrat. It's when I learned what sacrificial lamb meant. Um, basically, he had no chance. We, um, he ran against Duncan Hunter, and the party just kind of looked at us and said, oh, you know, good job. You're, you're helping him in that district. Good luck. You know, it's too red out there. There's no hope, you know. And we were lucky to get even three or four volunteers the entire campaign. Um, and so I swore, you know, if we ever had a candidate that was viable um, or even engaging and could articulate what they stood for, that I would come back and, you know, help. Um, and so as soon as I met Amar, um, I knew the moment I met him, I was like, that's our guy. Um, and in the beginning, it was a little bit tough because there were other Democratic candidates running. There was a bunch of candidates running um, for once, you know. Um, and then... So Katie and I joined up with Amar, um, and it's been incredible. I mean, <laughs> everybody who kind of stood back and waited to see who would make it through the primary, I mean, now it's all hands on deck. Um, so we've seen a shift from the sentiment of, okay, maybe there's a chance, you know. Um, we got 97% of the California Democratic Party endorsement. That's kind of impressive. Um, to now it's a perfect sort of opportunity. People are frustrated with about every other week Trump does something. Um, and then on top of that, Hunter is indicted. Um, and then on top of that, he's running a horrible yes. smear campaign. So people are in, you know. So that negative campaigning yeah. does uh, cause people to support Lamar, it, right? It actually, yeah, it, it's had a little bit of backlash. Um, and it did the same in the primary. We had a negative, um, the other Democratic opponent sent out a mailer with a fake tweet from Trump. <laughs> that said, Amar sports the wall, and then in tiny little letters, it's a fake tweet. And we actually had volunteers or people who are voters bring that into us and say, I'm here to help. Wow. This is crap. Because of this, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, oh, great. So, um, so what's what's ahead now? So we have yes. a few weeks. Yeah, we have, election. yep, if today's the six, we have 30 days. <laughs> um, sorry, we have a little countdown back there, but... Basically talking to voters, oh, as many as humanly possible, um, on the phones, at the doors, through commercials, mailers. Um, we have a text program. Any way that they'll listen to us is how we're going to get a hold of them. Okay, so if people want to get involved, like how do they... Yes, so campacampaign.com. If you're remotely, we could use your help writing postcards or doing... We have a text program called Relay. We also have a phone bank, and don't worry, guys, um, it's to register voters. We've got a script for you. It's not too hard. Um, and then if, they're, if they want to come down, um, we do have offices in Temecula, Escondido, and El Cajon, along with a couple remote locations. So so I heard that Escondido needs some help. Is that we the, do, further yep. north? It is further north. Okay, and so, so that's maybe where, that might be a good 
place for the people that come have to come down. It would be great. Or Temecula is even farther north. Okay. Um, okay. And there you go. <laughs> spread out neighborhoods. And interestingly, Temecula redistricted in the primary, and the Secretary of State had the wrong polling locations. And we had to fight and scream to get them, so we got the right polling locations. We were able to share it with everybody. Um, and there's a lot of Democrats in Temecula. People didn't think that in the past, and it's one of our top five areas. Um, okay. So, which is incredible. <laughs> For me, I'm excited because finally um, there's a lot of engagement, and so not even. So we're using Amara's campaign, and hopefully we get him elected. But to also shift the whole district purple, so um, 2020 and beyond, and even the down ballot races, um, we have a couple of joint walks. We'll have a candidate in a down ballot race come and speak, and we'll walk for them as well. So, so this has a real domino effect. Yes, and we're, I mean, not only by the end of this, we're going to have identified other people who are willing to step up and run, so we're building a pipeline, but capable campaign teams around them. Um, we've got some lead volunteers who are leading walks, launching them, scheduling people, doing everything. I mean, we're incredibly lucky on this campaign to have that kind of um, excitement, and honestly, it's out of necessity because we're grassroots. Mm -hmm. So, um, corporate free. Yes, corporate free. And, and you know what, though? People are into that. So, they come, they've helped. Um, so, so, you got some probably first time canvassers and yeah. makers, so you don't need any experience. You just exactly. show up on a weekend. Right? Yeah, and we'll train you, and we'll try and pair people up with uh, people who have gone before if possible. So, um, and if it's during the week, we usually have pizza. <laughs> And so, so what time is the weekend? So on the weekends, it's 11 to 3, and then it's 2 to 5. Um, and if you have to come a little bit late or leave early, any time you can give adds up. So even an hour, if you get five yeses, it's going to be that close. The latest polls show that we're even. Um, the D-Trip did a poll recently. Um, just about every poll that's been released, whether it shows a bigger gap or a smaller gap, all of them show that Hunter's under 50%. Nice. Which is awesome. Yes. So this is winnable. All right. all right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Erica. And so, all right, we're going to follow this uh, from Pasadena. And uh, thank you guys. Uh, keep donating. And if you want to help out, campa campaign.com. And keep fighting the good fight.